What's up? What's up, everybody? Hey, how's it going, tardy people? It's your girl, it me, Anuha. I am here for Just Keep Jamming episode number 23 with my longtime friend, my buddy, my stylist, my fairy glam mother, as we call him, <laughs> Mr. Ralph Malani. Can I get a whoop whoop? <laughs> you got to say whoop whoop. That's, that's your cue. You go whoop whoop. <laughs> okay he's whoop whooping awesome oh uh, ralph how are you i'm good how are you i'm you know how i am i i could yeah. be better <laughs> definitely could be better but um i'm happy to be meeting with my people today we got a zoom room full of awesome patreon peeps and i love you guys so much thank you so much for being such amazing supporters this is episode 23 and some of you guys have been here every single episode listening to the podcast and I know some people out there have listened to everyone too so thank you guys so much for the continued support we're calling this season three of just keep jamming having a little more structure this season talking about specifics and like a specific topic in each um, episode so this week's topic is going to be confidence and believing in yourself. And Ralph Malani is my, my stylist. He's a stylist to the stars. I've met him 12 years ago, pretty much. And we've gone through so much together. So I figure you're the perfect person to talk about confidence as you have this, you know, work in showbiz and you worked with so many amazing people. I can't wait to hear all of your stories, but just to get it started, you want to take like a couple minutes just to tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How did we meet, you know, start from the beginning. Um, from Hawaii, um, born and raised in Honolulu and in California, um, really all my life have had this love of beautiful things. I like glamour. I love furniture. I love architecture. I love flowers. I, you know, every, everything that makes me smile. Is Christmas trees. At Christmas. I love Christmas, period. <laughs> And I just, I, I try to find the beauty in everything and surround myself with it because it keeps me happy. And um, I, after high school, decided to apply for um, the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in LA, and I got in. And I wanted to be a fashion designer until I realized that it's not as glamorous as people think it is. And you work in icky warehouses, and it's hot and you don't really make any money at first. So I slowly transitioned from that idea into hair and makeup. And I was in LA and I asked around and I found out that like the Vidal Sassoon Academy was the top. And I went and after I graduated, I asked my teacher who the most famous hairdresser in Beverly Hills was. And at the time it was Jose Bear. He was the first real celebrity stylist and he did Elizabeth Taylor and Farrah Fawcett and Cher and all these fabulous movie stars. And I went and I applied for a job about five times. And each time I was told that they weren't hiring. And I'm the kind of person that if I want something, I figure out what I have to do to get it, who I have to meet to get it. And I do it and I don't give up. And about the sixth or seventh time I'd walked into the salon, the, the manager at the front desk already didn't like me because I was bugging her. I noticed that there was a stylist at the back of the salon who had two Hawaiian bracelets on. And her name was Trisha Kalani. And I beelined it for her. And I, I just asked her in the middle of her client, like, are you from Hawaii? And she said, yes. And I said, I really want to work here. And that day she got me a job. She took me in the back, introduced me to who I needed to meet. And I started working. And this salon, it was on Rodeo Drive. It was a palace. It was chandeliers and marble floors. And there were women walking around in little maids' outfits, serving cappuccinos to the clients. And it was something that I'd never, ever dreamed that I would ever be in the middle of. But it felt so comfortable. And it's what I wanted. And when I saw at the end of the day that the stylists all drove 
Jaguars and Mercedes. And I was just like, this is where I need to be. This is what I want to do with my life. And it was so hard. And they were so mean. And I cried a lot in the bathroom. But I never gave up. I was like, they're not going to take my dream away from me. I'm going to keep going. And I kept going. And it, it didn't get easier at first. It got harder. There were a few times that I had to sit in the car and think, did I make a mistake? I'm, I'm not good. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Cause that's what I would hear from some of these stylists. You're not going to be any good. You don't have it. You don't have the talent. And there was just something that inside of me that just was like, screw them. I'm going to do it. If it takes me forever, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show them that they're wrong and that I can be just like them. And I did. And I, I proved them wrong. And I've kind of done that in my entire career of anything I've done. People have always stood up and said, who are you? you? You can't do that. You're not the right look. You're too big. You're too dark. You're too this or that. Again, screw them. I, I know or I believe that every wish, dream, and idea that you get in your head is a gift from the universe or God or whoever you believe in. And I believe that every door that you need to walk through to get to that ultimate goal is in front of you. And you need to turn the doorknob and you need to walk through. <gasps> and that door slams in your face a lot, a lot. And it's the difference between success and pity is even if it slams in your face and it hurts, you turn the doorknob and you walk through it again. And I've never stopped turning the door on in my whole life. I, I believe, again, those gifts are given to us for a reason. And, you know, I, I've gone to the top of my career in the salon industry. I, I was part of an artistic team. I did Fashion Week in New York. I, I did photo shoots with celebrities. I've done all these really cool things. And then my husband got sick. And I had to step back from work to take care of him and finding out how hard it was to go back to where I was. And I didn't have the same passion. I didn't have the same energy because my husband had cancer, which showed me that there's so many more important things in life than just money. When Cliff had cancer, they didn't give him the best diagnosis uh, for survival. And they kept telling me that, you know, there were several days when I was leaving the hospital room to go to work that they would basically tell me in the hallway that today's probably the last day that you'll see him. And I just refused. I wasn't going to let him go. And I slept on a chair for seven and a half months in his hospital room because he didn't want to sleep alone. And I carried him home after the seven and a half months. He was a skeleton. He lost 70 pounds. He was bones, couldn't stand on his feet. And because of that, because of that part of my life, I now appreciate every freaking second that I'm given on this earth. And I try to be happy. Um, even though there's things that pop up that make you want to scream and cry, it's okay. Walk in the bathroom, scream and cry, come out, it's gone. Let it go. You killed it. You made him survive. Like, I believe it. Like, you saved his life with your I, belief in him and well, I refuse. Like yeah. that, that was the one thing that anytime the doctor said something to me, I was like, no, it's not. Yeah. You know, I started a beauty pageant. I started Hawaii fashion week when there was none. Mm -hmm. I started a modeling agency. Um, and I did them all for like five years each until I felt that, okay, I accomplished what I wanted. And I need to do something else now. I have more dreams. And it, it was like everything I've done, I've done because I believed that I could, even though there's so many obstacles in life saying you can't. And that's the trick. You have to always shrug it off and turn the doorknob mm -hmm. and walk through the door. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> no, I love it so much. Cause like, okay. I was thinking when you were saying that, like, how bad do you want it? Right. Like, cause then there's some people in life who believe, oh, if, if it's meant to be, then it shouldn't be so hard. 
But there's people like me and apparently you that believe the universe or God kind of challenges you and says, how bad do you want it? He makes it not super easy necessarily. Like it's I think how some- worthy are you to get it? How worthy are you to get it? I like that because it, it makes me reflect back on my time in San Francisco when I wanted to be there so badly. I wanted to experience this city. I wanted to not move back to Maui with my tail between my legs, but shit just kept happening to me. My car broke down on the Golden Gate Bridge. My, my car got broken into in the, in the Tenderloin and somebody stole my computer. You know, like I couldn't find a place to live. I was couch surfing for like months. And I'm like, this is a sign from God saying, just go home, go home. I'm like, wait, or is it a sign from God saying, how bad do you want it? Keep turning that doorknob or no, keep turning that same doorknob until it doesn't slam back in your face. Cause you want to get through that door. Right. I like that. analogy. Of course. Yeah. And nothing's easy. That's what I'm trying to say. Nothing is easy. If it was mm. easy, you wouldn't appreciate it and it wouldn't be great. You know? Yeah. And every time I walk onto a movie set, every time an actor or even just a waitress from Zippy sits in my chair and lets me touch them, I always in my head say, thank you. Because I appreciate this. It's a gift that's been given to me. I don't take anything for granted. I don't take anyone for granted. I don't believe anyone is any better than anybody else. Everyone has something to give you. And I have clients that were college students that were scraping pennies to pay me. And I've had clients who own houses as big as Walmart, you know, and have everything. Uh And I've learned that they're the same. They all have the same problems. They all have the same issues. One just lives in a prettier box. That's all. But it's, it's all about that box that we all strive to have. And then realizing that any box you live in can be pretty. Any box. Yeah, you can make a, a little shoebox pretty, right? And there's pretty. a stylist and, in and here. And that's, <laughs> that's what it matters. I mean, when I first moved out on my own, my parents gave me money for groceries for a month. I bought a chandelier. Mm. And I had no food. <laughs> I had no food for a month. I ate popcorn for a whole month because that's all I could afford. But I had a chandelier in my house and I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> and that kind of made me happy. Every time I walked through the door and I turned it on and it was sparkly... I felt real. I felt like, ooh, I'm I'm living my life the way I want to live it. And oh that's God, the way I, I lived my life forever. I mean, I used to, later on in, in, in school, my parents would send me money and I'd go out and buy clothes, forgetting that I needed to pay the electric bill, the water bill, and eat food. But I had beautiful clothes. They made me happy at the time. But those were all lessons I had to learn too. Like, you know, you can wrap it up in a package, but then it's starving to death and stealing saltine crackers from restaurants because they don't have any food, you know? So it, it, it's all part of growing up. It's all part of the, 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 tra- the road that we have to travel. But yeah, I think that, you know, every saltine cracker that I spilled, I was so grateful for because I was hungry, you know? And, <laughs> and it's, it's all about that. You know, you, you, you make, the best situation out of what's given to you or what you've created. And a lot of times I did the stupid thing by buying a chandelier instead of buying my food, but I learned, I learned from it. I learned that you have to be an adult. We were talking about this before we started recording everybody just about like relationships in life and how, you know, people are in your life for maybe a reason, a season, or a lifetime and just accepting that one might not be a lifetime person in your life. It can sometimes be painful, but, but like, as we talk about confidence and believing in yourself, you got to know, you know, your self-worth and what you are allowing yourself to feel from this other person. If they're not going to be treating you the way that you want to be treated or don't think as highly of you as you think of yourself, like as you deserve to be treated, then, then they're not there for a lifetime. Then they may be there for a season or a, for the reason of you learning that yeah. lesson about yourself. Yeah. And- Confidence is scary to a lot of people. They take it the wrong way. Oh, and yeah. I always tell like, like younger stylists that work with me, confidence and arrogance are very well connected. And you have to know the difference between the two. Confidence is you 
being proud of your accomplishments because you know how hard you had to work for them and also being grateful. Arrogance is it's all about you with no gratitude and, and, and that's ugly and that, you know, but a lot of times it's the person who's accusing you of being arrogant that has the issue because maybe they're not happy with their life or maybe it, most of the time it's jealousy. I've learned that so many times. It's like, why, why do you hate me? Why do you talk about me behind my back? Why do you say things like that? And it's just jealousy. And you know, why do you post all these pictures on social media? You're bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm proud. That's, there's and a thankful. Yeah. And thankful and grateful. for where I Those came from. Those always right. have to go together. You have to be proud of yourself because you've accomplished it, but you also have to be grateful for the opportunity you were given to do it. I feel like it was you who told me, maybe it was you, but it, it goes right along with what you just said. My song, big deal. Yeah. Like I had to have a little like blurb in front of the song sometimes, you know, like, Hey, this next song I'm about to perform, you know, it's talking about, and I think someone, I think you told me like, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance, but, uh, when you know, you got it going on, you know, you got it going on. So I don't know if you know, but I'm kind of a big deal. Like, it's a funny thing. Like that's called confidence when I'm trying to talk about, like, I don't know if you know, but I'm kind of a big deal. Like I'm not being cocky, like arrogance. I'm just being like confident and, and honest, I guess. Well, I don't know. And that's how you have to be to move ahead in the industry that you're in. You can't just sit back and expect people to know these things or, or, or get you. You have to tell them what's so great about you. So they get it. And then you go, well, they're just, the you're just educating them. Like, it's not even like, a, it. yeah, you're just educating them. It's like you, you're handing them your resume, but you're doing it in a pi- in picture form on social media. It's fine. I don't it's think there's totally anything wrong fine. with it. <laughs> No. And like I do career days at at beauty schools and I always tell them, you guys have to know that social media is like 80% fantasy. (laughs) You know, it's not real because we post all the good stuff. Very rarely do you have people posting. Oh yeah. I fought with my husband today and he's an asshole or, you know, the dog bit or whatever. It's always look at me, look at me, look at me, which it's what it's for. It's entertainment. Social media is entertainment. It's not going to change your life. It's not going to change your world. I mean, some people have made a business out of it, but look at them. It's all fake too, you know? And it, it's just, they're selling something. They're selling mm-hmm. a product. They're being salespeople. And that's why they're making money on social media, but it's not real. It's a job. Right. So Me you and- have to- we yes talked about this exact subject on um, the communication podcast with Malika Dudley. Malika Dudley had this com- uh, conversation about social media and how it affects confidence in little girls. I want to ask you about working with these stars. So you've worked on Hawaii Five. Tell us where what? you've worked. Sorry. <laughs> I've done Hawaii Five O, Magnum PI. I've done um, Journey to the Center of the Earth 2 with Dwayne Johnson. I did Hobbs and Shaw. I did a jungle cruise. Um, I did Yugi Kame Aloha. I did a uh, Kenui road, a series for HBO. I'm right now doing a uh, murder mystery too, with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Oh my God. There's going to be a murder mystery too. These are all filmed in Hawaii. This is like, yeah, you are the stylist or what is your role in these, in these films? I'm the hairstylist. So, ah. um, when I started out, there was such a huge difference between a salon stylist and a movie stylist. Movie stylists do a lot of wigs. I've never done that. And you spend the entire day making sure that that one little piece is in the same place all day, Uh... which doesn't sound hard, but it is because the wind blows, the actors sweat, they, they scratch their heads, but you got to make sure or else every single second of the show you'd see a different part in their hair or you, it wouldn't look right. It wouldn't have continuity. And those are all things I had to teach myself. And because I had such a long career in the salon and I knew how to cut and color and, and all these other things, the stylists that were in the union who had only done movie hair weren't so good at that stuff. They were good at wigs and they were mean to me, like so mean to me. They wouldn't show me anything. They wouldn't teach me anything. They didn't want me there. Plus I got all my days at once, which they didn't like. And it was one of those things where I, I had to just be confident in myself, figure it out, 
learn from YouTube, learn from people that I called on the phone in LA and, and just ask, can you show me? And now I'm the boss. What is one thing that you, we're working all of these stars that you've worked with? I mean, we've talked a lot about the people in your industry, but I think the, the public wants to like get a little nugget of, of interestingness about the stars that you worked with. Like what is one thing that they all have in common, maybe as far as their confidence or the belief in themselves, are they all confident? Awesome. Hey, no. what's up, Ralph? I feel fabulous. Make me look more fabulous. Or is it more of like Act, a, acting no, is just that it's acting. So people that you see on screen from my experience that are super funny are super dark in real life and very not funny. It's that second that they say action, that their whole energy changes and they become this, this amazingly funny like person that just makes you roll on the floor. The second they say cut, they go back to the dark place and everything shuts down. It's, it's very strange. Interesting. And the older movie stars, um, because they've been in the business for so long and they were part of that old Hollywood grooming machine that taught them how to be movie stars. They are very professional. They're very nice. Um, and, and it's their job and they know that it's their job and they're good at it. It's the young influencer kind of people that are such a pain in the ass because they never had to work for it. Ralph, when you work with someone big or small, like whether you said like the Zippy's waitress or, you know, Jason Momoa, um, do you notice a transformation in their confidence in themselves when, you know, after they first sit down and then yeah. when they leave? Like, I mean, of course, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was lucky enough to, to work on Aquaman 2. Um, they shot one scene here. The whole movie was shot in London. And then Jason came here basically to shoot one scene. And it, I, I got to see a local boy who's still very local boy as a huge star now. I mean, he's, he's huge now, you know? And I watched him and, and I think parts of what made me like him more is the fact that his entire family is in his trailer. Aunties, uncles, cousins, dad, like everybody's in his trailer and they're all hanging out and they're all very local. They're all Nanakuli people. They're very Hawaiian. And it was so neat to see that he's still like that. You know, and he would come out and all the kids would be sitting out at, in front of his trailer. And he's like, who wants poke bowls? And then he'd look at the PA and be like, get everybody poke bowls on me. You know, like he's still that local boy who's very aloha, yet he's so beautiful. Oh my God, is he so beautiful? Yes, he, he really is. And <laughs> he's so um, funny. Like he's, he's kind of a goofball when you watch him because he like jokes and and um, he's always cracking up. But when he's working, oh. he's working, you know? And, and I think he knows how to turn it on. He knows how to turn oh, yeah. on his professionalism. And Dwayne Johnson, the same thing. Dwayne Johnson is super professional, always where he's supposed to be. But the thing that endeared him to me is his mother usually is on set and he never takes one eye off of her. And he's in the middle of a scene, he'll be like, can somebody get a tent for my mom for the sun? Can somebody make sure my mom has water? Can somebody make sure she has a better chair to sit on? And he does the same thing with his little girls. He always knows where they are and makes sure that they're okay. And I, I, I commend men like that because a lot of guys who are sex symbols are all ego. Mm. And all they care about is themselves. And they have their people to, to take care of mom. They have their people to take care of the kids. They don't really care. He's different. And so is Jason. Jason had Lola and Wolf on set with him. And he was so proud of his daughter who had one little line at the end of the show. She's in a beach scene. She's standing there. And I think she orders a shave ice or something. And he was standing there with his phone videoing her with this smile that went from one ear to the other. And he was just so proud of her. And at the same time, his little boy's kind of um, naughty, we'll say. Kolohe, kolohe, yes, Very yes. kolohe. And 
he always made sure that he'd be like, hey, no. You know, like he watching, would scold him. He would scold, scold him in him, front of everybody. But uh-huh. not in a crazy way, in a professional way. But you could see the the respect from the child to the father. He'd be like, okay, sorry, you know. And it, that that shows you that they're still real and they still uh-huh. know where they came from. I think one of the neatest experiences I, I noticed on Jungle Cruise was they had a group of special needs children came to the set and he stopped everything walked over, got on his knees so he'd be the same height as all of them and talked to them like he was them. He, he really wanted to know their names. He wanted to know what they liked, you know, and, and that was so endearing because there was no cameras shooting this. It wasn't for publicity. It's what he does. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that, you know, that's very rare uh, because I've worked with other actors who, and I've heard this out of their mouths, I don't want anybody looking at me. When I walk this way, everybody has to look the other way. I saw a little bit of that when I was on Hawaii Five-0, like as far as like they didn't want anyone looking at them, not even like yeah, fans passing by. They're no, like, block all. me, and, block me. I'm like, And Whoa. a lot of them are actually um, so full of themselves that they won't like I worked on a movie Mike and Dave need wedding dates oh I love that movie and one of the actresses there was a group of little girls at the swimming pool and they were so excited to see her and she just turned her face the other way and kept walking and would not even respond to them like they were so excited and she just wanted nothing to do with them oh god yeah that's horrible. I want to know so bad who that was, but don't, don't tell us. Um, <laughs> can we talk about the first time that you and I met? Do you want to tell the whole story? I want you to. Sure. I was hired to style the performers and the presenters at the Hope Bowl Awards one year. And I had Raya Tea Helm. I had the Stephanie year was Lum. 2010, I believe. 2010. Right to Helm, Stephanie Lum was the MC. I did her. Amy Hanaya Lee did her. And then I had this name on my list, Anuhea. Anuhua? Never met you, didn't know who you were, standing there expecting a very Hawaiian looking girl to walk <laughs> up. And you were sitting there in the chair the whole time. And I finally said, Where is this Anuhea girl? Like, I'm running behind. And you're like, Oh, it's me. And I went, Oh. And I sat you down and you were like, do whatever. And you had this kind of rocker chick, sexy pink dress with all this jewelry. And I gave you a big mohawk and you performed. And I don't, I don't say love at first sight in a romantic way, but I did love you at first sight because (gasps) we clicked. Yes, we did. And that night I told you, come to the salon. It's on me. You need your roots done. You need a haircut. And then after talking to you, you were just kind of starting to perform. You were just starting to, you know, get there. And I had all these friends that made clothes. And I was like, oh, girl, I, I know it's hard right now. So I'm going to hook you up. And just started networking. Hooking and me up. He started hooking, hooking me up, up, guys. Like with every outfit that I could ever that I ever performed in like all of those pictures that we see on my little flashbacks that I've been doing on social media. Like I can be like, yep. Rob gave me that one. Ralph hooked me up with that one. Ralph gave me that one. Like everything from the pro bowl outfits, um, through missing Polynesia. That was a, a big like sponsor of mine. That was all through Ralph through Tiare Teiti, who had the more like formal, more like fancier silk gowns that I wore for the more classier events to um, other Hoku Hano Hano award outfits that he would get like either Missing Polynesia or Kini Zamora to make custom for me. Or he'd go into uh, like, you know, gown shops and try to get, get them to sponsor me or I'd buy one thing and they'd hook me up with all kinds of different stuff to wear for free just because I bought one thing. That was all Ralph. Like Ralph did so much for me. Not just that, like, 88 tees like you got me to go in there and have like a shopping spree do you remember oh my that God. <laughs> that lady was like take more take more take more it was crazy have you ever had a shopping spree guys like i never had in my life where you just get to go into a store and just whatever you want 
And that was all because of Ralph Milani. I got to go 88 T's has some cute stuff. That's in Waikiki. Um, yeah, I owe <laughs> so much. And then even just taking fashion risks, like there was an article that was done, um, about us. And I think, you know, you kind of had the, the reins on what the article would sound like. Cause it was supposed to be like a before and after project. Yeah. Like you took me in under your wing. Here's a before photo. And it was me wearing like a forever 21, like, like hounds tooth, like dress over jeans and like cowboy boots. And I had my hair in one of those little snooky, <laughs> snooky, like poof, poofy on the top, you know, like, right. Like this, you know what I mean? Like that. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like a little overweight and like, didn't know how to do my makeup and man, that was my before photo. And then we did a full on photo shoot in the streets of Chinatown. You like did my hair, got me into some cool. And that was the thing with you, Ralph, like you saw the vision of you are a local girl, although you don't look Hawaiian necessarily, you are Hawaiian and you need to showcase that part of yourself by, you know, wearing Hawaiian clothing by Hawaiian designers. And I can pull it off without looking over the top. You know, like if I, if I, if I looked maybe different, it might not have the same effect. Like it was a kind of a cool juxtaposition of like a white girl with blonde hair wearing like Hawaiian print, everything. And you're my, you're my like boho mermaid, like Island goddess, you know, Ah! and that's kind of the thing, you know, we've gone from the spectrum of modern Aloha wear that was a modern silhouette, not really like a mumu or a, a holoku or anything. And then we we slowly went into the gauzy... Lani Lau. Lani Lau. Lani Lau. Lani Lau. Lau. And, and then we went more into the boho look where you'd already established yourself. You were already busy. Now I wanted you to be comfortable, but I wanted you to have that boho island glamour right. bodice look. Yeah. And, and it was perfect because I had just had a baby. Like Ralph was on set with me at many a music video, which he helped me wear, pick out the right outfit, like the easier with um soldier music video. Ralph was like my right hand man. He was holding my one-year-old baby or like seven month year old baby. Like here, hold him while I'm out here like <laughs> shooting scenes, but I'm wearing, you know, this boho kind of flowier material, which was perfect for someone who just had a baby. And then totally. fast forward, or maybe rewind when we went to Tahiti together, right? Which is one of both of our favorite places in the entire world. That was so fun. And same thing. We, you know, I found this pink dress that was just fancy enough to wear at night, but so soft and flowy that it was so island without having any flowers on it or anything. And then I hooked you up with some $10,000 pearl thing that you wore over your whole body. I know. That was amazing. That I was sweating the whole night, hoping nobody (laughs) grabbed it off of you. Um, But it's stuff like that. Like even the Pearl people, remember I took you in there and they gave you some stuff. And yeah, the, um, this was a Maui divers jewelry. You took me in one time and I got, you got everything. It was so pretty. All of that was given to you because you deserved it and you were worthy. You weren't arrogant. You weren't mean. You weren't, you weren't one of those snotty, like, give me this, give me that. You were always, even at 88 T's when that lady told you, take whatever you want. You were like, really? This is okay. And she was like, no, no, more, more, more. That's why it's easy for me to do what I do with you because everyone sees your heart and your energy. And I'm the first one to tell them this is going to help her, but it's going to help you because she's wearing your clothes. She has social media following. She's a real girl. She's not a tall, stick, skinny, nothing. She has a real body with real curves. She looks Caucasian, but she looks like she's mixed with something else too. So she has that universal thing going where she's ethnically blended or whatever they're calling it now. And that's why I've never had a problem when I call someone and I say, Anuhia has a concert and I'd love if if she could wear something of yours, mm-hmm. they never hesitate. You have that reputation for being nice. And that's why I've never had anyone say no. It's, it's, a, it's a match made in heaven. That's it really is. And, really. and I've had so much fun. Even this last thing we did with you for Christmas. Yeah. So Ralph like, styled me in that beautiful red dress, the red dress um, that I was wearing on the 
the Christmas spectacular with the Hawaii symphony orchestra that was um, filmed right before I went on the all is bright tour. Yeah. So he brought me tons of different options, but that red dress with the one sleeve and the little slit opening and like, he just knew my body and what would be flattering or not. And like, he would run up to the stage and like, help me adjust to make sure that the, the, the scrunches were at the right spot. So it wasn't showing too much of like my little mommy pooch and made sure I wasn't too sweaty. He got me the best makeup artist for the job. And, you know, I never worked with him before and you, he was treating me with such respect, but I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we were all best friends, even though I never met him. I would never bring anyone into your energy that I didn't believe in and trust. And he proved himself to me on so many other things. And every now and then he would mention you, like, I would love to do and I, I hear that from so many people. So I was always a little leery, but he proved himself. And that night, it's like we, the three of us have been together for like a hundred years. Like, yeah, it was so comfortable. The makeup was flawless and it was fun. It was, it, it, it was, was so it, fun. It was the, one of the scariest. No, I've you never, been, never been work to me. You've always Aww. been fun and like my little niece that, I'm watching blossom into this flower that I need to help. And and that's the way I've always looked at you. And, you know, you called me and you asked me for advice and you're like, I know you're really busy and honey, honest to God, with all my heart, I'm never too busy for you. Oh I don't care what God. I'm doing. I don't care who, who I'm working with. I will always drop it and go to you, you know, and it, because I love you and I, I've loved you from the start and mm-hmm it just makes me happy to see you happy. And it makes me happy that you have this look that we've grown into yeah, and this image and, you know, and that's such a a big thing. Okay. Like just, I, just to get back to our topic of confidence and belief in yourself, like I just got to give it up for this man because seriously, like, you know, I've struggled just like so many other women in the world. Like I'm a real person. I have a real woman's body. I'm not skinny by any means. And I never have been. My weight has fluctuated. You know, I've been skinnier at certain times, but that never mattered to Ralph. And to have somebody that was in my corner, helping me navigate this stardom where people are now paying attention to my body inevitably, just because I'm a performer now, like it's a lot of pressure and it's very scary and it's very, it can really mess with, with your mental health. Like people are judging what you're wearing. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell to wear. Like I'm just a regular person that suddenly now is a musician. And so just to know, just when I met Ralph, like to have him have had my back all these years has been such a relief, you know, from, from just pulling products that he knew were, would fit my body type to just being there in my corner, telling me that I'm so awesome or something like I, I want every woman to have to have this. I want every, everybody in the world to have this. Like, can't we all just have somebody like a stylist? Like I want that for somebody. How can, how can a, how can an average person who's not a star, you know, get some kind of advice like this, Ralph? Like, is there anything that they can do? Can they go to like their local store or like just have a friend who's styly? You know, what's funny is, um, in movies and in TV, they always, these like it girls or these like rich women always have a gay. I have a gay. Yeah. And it's, it's, it sounds like (laughs) a joke, but I don't believe it is a joke because so many of my friends have such good taste. And because we grew up, me personally, when I was little up until now, I would go shopping with my mom and pick out all her clothes. And it was just something that I always liked to do. And I thought I was good at it because people would always say, Oh God, you look so pretty whenever she'd go out. And I would be like, I picked that out, you know? Uh And a lot of times when girls go with other girls shopping, the girlfriend that you're going with is going to try and make you look just like her because that's her style. And she likes that. It's the same thing with women hairdressers. They always cut their client's hair exactly how their hair is because they think that looks great because it's on them. I don't have that because I don't wear dresses 
and I don't wear jewel like big earrings and stuff like that. So when I look at something, <laughs> when I when I look at something like a dress or heels or something, I'm I'm picturing you like a beautiful Barbie doll or a paper doll, and I'm putting the look together that you know this is going to accentuate you know her waistline. This is going to hide this. This is going to accentuate this. You know she's tall. She needs this. Blah blah blah. So I look at it from a different eye than your mm. best girlfriend would, who's going to say, oh my God, I love that dress. So you should have that dress. Oh my gosh. It's so simple. Just have a gay. Everyone needs a gay. to have a gay. <laughs> They're everywhere. They're cheap. You just have to buy them lunch. It's so easy. But Oh my God. You heard yeah. it here, folks. That's how you do it. If you can't afford yeah. a stylist, just get yourself a gay friend and they will tell Plus, you. Bubba's like I'm that not- for me. Bubba is like that for me when Ralph's not around. Bubba oh, yeah. will tell me like sign your uh, t- tie your thing around your waist up higher so that it accentuates your skinny waist and like he tells me wear more jewelry uh, when when Ralph is not around. So I I have one as well when you're not around Ralph. But. <laughs> but but it all comes down to one thing and it's the fact that we built a relationship. You know I always tell people she was my client and then she became my friend and now she's my family oh. and there's. There's like, that makes the whole world of difference because I know you, I I believe I know you so well that I know, you know, and then I can read you too. I can read when you're not happy or you're not feeling it and when you are. So I don't have a problem talking to you about whatever's going on or telling you like, girl, there's people out there, you know, you got to brighten it up. But there's other people, you know, you hire them and they're not going to tell you anything because they're just there no. to do their job and leave. I guess so, the lesson, like we just, we grew this, like we deserve this, yeah, this, this, co- this camaraderie and this, co- uh, what's the word we've earned it over the years, you know, totally That's earned it. it's never work. It's never been work. It's always been a pleasure and an honor and something that I cherish as part of my life. And, you know, and I, and I also am very protective of you, you know, I don't ever let anyone disrespect you in my presence because it's always jealousy. If you did something horrible to somebody, I could see why they would say something, but it's never that it's never been that in front of me. It's always been opinion, their opinion. And their opinion is always coming from a stupid place. And girl, I'm the first one. Thank God I'm as big as I am because I'm not a little fragile gay. I'm a big, scary gay. And I will just knock them out. So it's like, that's the way it is. But you guys all see like that part like makes me feel so weird because it's like, people hate me like what but it is true like ralph knows firsthand because he's in show the it's like cool words when the guy wouldn't get out of the bathroom oh yeah somebody was being a hater on me and all because... those cool girls were being really yeah. snarky to you what yeah. did i do i walked up to their kumu right before she performed on the hokus and i told her everything yeah i don't i don't care I'm like oh i don't want to have confrontation but ralph was like oh hell no you don't talk to my girl like that you gotta get the out of the bathroom, she got to go on. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But he said, yep, 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 yep. You know, but it's like that. It's great. It's great to have somebody in your corner like that. Um, can you ask me, can I ask you a question? Another question. Yeah. Um, do you have any more dreams or goals in your career or your personal life that you still want to, um, achieve? You've done I, so much. I would love to win some kind of award for a show that I'm on. Um, mm. that's my next goal. Would that be and like an I, Emmy? What, what kind of like, category would that be? It would be, yeah, there's an Oscar and Emmy and a Golden Oscar. Globe for hair. <gasps> yeah. So it, it would be one of those. And, and that's my new goal. And the Ooh. other thing is I am getting older and I see these kids everywhere and I want one and I want one because I have so much, I was given so much love as a kid from my mother and my grandmother and and other people that I want to give that to someone and I want to teach them how to be a good human and make a difference. And that's kind of my new goal right now is we're trying to figure, there's so many kids out there that don't have love and that don't have a home that we're trying to figure out how to make that happen. Um, you and, and just, your husband. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. And just give them, 
Cliff is like a big child anyway. So he would be the fun dad and I'd be the (laughs) one telling them that, you know, to their food, but it's, it's the next thing that I, that I would like to do. And then, Oh, Oh! okay. I'm going to ask you some fun (laughs) questions just to finish it up in, um, like a little lighthearted. Um, would you rather go in the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great, great grandchildren? I would love to go. I would love to go into the past just to see where I really came from, like the kind of people that I came from that made me who I am, because I truly believe that we see parts of our parents in us, even though we, sometimes we don't want to, it comes out or our grandparents or who, or anyone in, in your life that gave you love. Um, I think you take a little bit of them into your own persona, but I think that would be the best thing in the world. I am so scared of the future because our planet is dying and it makes me sad. It makes me really, really sad. Um, and I wish I could go back in time to tell people don't Mm -hmm. do these things. Oh my God. Right. You know, like take care of the water, take care of the ocean, take care of the air. No single use plastics like Jason Momoa. No plastic, you know, just (laughs) it's so sad to me that we know how to fix it. Everyone knows how to fix it. Nobody's fixing it. And it's, just, it's so sad. Would you rather be able to talk with animals or speak all foreign languages? I think I'd love to speak foreign languages because I love culture and I love to learn about people's culture. I truly believe that animals talk to us in their own way anyway. <laughs> So I kind of get what they're feeling sometimes. And I, I always tell people, I would rather live with a bunch of dogs than people because they love you. They, they love, love you. you. Even when you're, even when you're an asshole, even when you're like, you know, you're, t- you're talking, you're talking to a bunch of dog people up in this room right now. We all are dogs. We all have yeah, dogs. And, <laughs> and I think dogs are magic. And I think they were like a gift from, you know, God to keep us happy and safe and normal. Oh my God. I know. Right. Would you rather, um, I think I might know the answer to this one. Would you rather spend a night in the luxury hotel room or camping surrounded by beautiful scenery? Okay. Those, those are, that's like a trick question because I I love beautiful hotel rooms, but then I love nature, but I think I I need a bathroom. So (laughs) Yeah, I probably go to that. I feel like you love the finer things. But then again, the nature is the finer thing. But if we could totally. go glamping, let's do glamping. Yeah, glamping would medium. be better. I, I just don't like bugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather lose your keys or lose your cell phone? Um, I actually had someone leave me a message on messenger and I lost my Facebook for like three weeks because they, it got like a virus or something. And it was probably the nicest three weeks because I didn't pick up my phone at all. Uh And I had things to do, you know, where a lot of times I'm carrying my phone, even while I'm working and I'm always looking at it. So I probably wouldn't mind losing my phone. Right. I mean, I guess the, the, the follow-up question is like, you're not going to get it replaced right away. Would you rather just be able to stay at home or just not even look at social media? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would rather lose my keys cause I stay home all day, every day. Anyway, I haven't left my house in three days. Um, actually today I went to the store, but I, before this, I didn't leave and I don't mind it at all. I like staying at home. I create my, my, my dream situation in my shoebox. I make this place cute. Okay. Here's a couple of, um, rapid fire ones. So don't even think about it. Don't even need to expand. Just answer. Um, do you have your own Netflix account or do you use somebody else's? My own. Do you have a guilty pleasure? Chips. I knew you're going to say that. Um, (laughs) what is your go-to karaoke song? Share something by share. I knew it. (laughs) What is your last Google search? Cher because she's the new it girl for Mac. She is 75 years old and so gorgeous. I saw a meme that said, can we all agree that Cher is a vampire? Cher. Just because like she's never aging. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story that I shared in the beginning of our 
podcast days. Do you guys remember about Cher when I said, uh, Cher went up to her mom or her mom said to Cher, Cher, like, I really hope that you would marry a rich man someday. And then Cher said, mommy, I am a rich man. What? Yeah. Yeah. And there's like shirts that say, mom, I am a rich man. Like that have Cher's picture on it. I think the reason I like her so much is one, she's super glamorous and always dressed up crazy. But two, if you ever watch her be interviewed, she says the F word. She's like a real woman. Like she doesn't give a crap about what people think. And I love that because I think she doesn't take herself as seriously as other actresses do. And those are the kind of people I gravitate to is they still know who they are. Yeah. I I get that vibe from her too. Her and like Erica Badu. Erica Badu is like another one of my favorite, like just real, like cool. She's a cool mom. She shares cool stories on her Instagram. Okay. One, one more. What world record do you think you have a shot at beating? (laughs) Something that, something that has to do with eating chips. (laughs) Yeah. Probably the person who ate the most Doritos in their lifetime. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh. It's been an hour of talking with this amazing man. You guys, can you unmute yourself? And just like, if anyone has a, oh, sorry, a question to ask Ralph or just a comment, go ahead and spit it out because I'm so grateful to have one of my dearest friends here and him being so real and open and vulnerable with us. Thank you so much, Ralph. Oh, no I have a question, Anytime. Ralph. Oh, Sharon has one. Yeah. Huh? Wait, since Anu's on stage a lot and there's bright lights and, and what's good, like makeup for like sweat and bright lights and actresses and actors that, that use all the time that, that stays put? <laughs> good question. I think, I think right? um, like in Anu's case, because she's performing and she doesn't get to run off and get fixed up between every song and it's hot here, so we all sweat. Um, the best thing to do is just give her a really strong lip and her lashes, and you can see that from far away. The rest of her makeup usually washes off because it's hot, but as long as her lip stays there and her, her lashes give her definition around her eyes, then she's fine. Actors can use any makeup because we literally touch them up every single time that they do another take because they have to look exactly the same throughout the whole movie. So even if they sweat or if it rains on them or whatever, they're they're never going to look like it. So I would say always wear a makeup that doesn't break you out, makes you feel pretty. And, you know, you don't really have to spend a ton of money on makeup. You just have to know, you know, what, feels comfortable what your shade is i'm sure right just know your shade right the worst thing is when your face and your chest don't match or your face and your ears don't match so it's it's one of those things and then a a really good concealer because you know sometimes we have um, bags or circles or wrinkles and you know a really good concealer underneath your foundation is like a gift when you take a woman of any age and you put makeup on them you want them to look younger. You don't want them to look older. And That's heavy true. makeup looks, everybody look older, especially when you contour. Like the Kardashian face is not a good face for normal people because it makes you look like a drag queen. It's too heavy. I saw somebody trying to say, put freaking lube on your face as a base. What? <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah, so... Would- Don't trust what you see on TikTok. (laughs) Yeah, it would go in your eyes. It would make a mess. Like, it would not be a good thing. But No, I can't even imagine. What a waste of lube. Anyway. (laughs) You want to find your lip color. Spermocidal lube. What a waste. Okay, no. (laughs) Find your lip color? How do you find your lip color? Is that what you're saying? Find the lip color that looks best on you. And that should be your go-to. Unless you're going red carpet or if you're going to an award show, then you want to do a red or something a little more dramatic, but you should always find Mm -hmm. a lip color that's kind of, if you're lighter complected, it should be pinky or rosy. If you're darker complected, it should be peachy or Mm -hmm. beigey, like more neutral. And it should be a colored gloss because that makes everybody look young and healthy and pretty. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of pink on lighter skin 
or a little bit of like a, a pale blush is always good. And then on darker skin, anything peachy is so pretty because it, it just complements your skin tone. And that a lot of times that's all you need. And then a little mascara and you're set. Blush changed my life. Like, um, yeah, I, I remember the come over love music video. I think you were there and I did my own makeup, but then you were like super complimentary on my, on my blush skills. Blush. I just did a little <laughs> bit of blush right there. Like girl, your blush. I'm like my blush. I know. Right. Just a little dab of <laughs> blush and it goes a long way. Um, you look good in that video. Thank you. I had big ass yeah. fake eyelashes. That was Ralph's um, suggestion to go to Mac and get some like real good ones rather than just like the long drugs kind. Cause we're in a music video. We got to do it right. Um, yeah. But I was wearing my missing Polynesia as usual. I remember that day we were at um, Kaka'ako or. Yeah. Like yeah. the, be- like the beachfront with all the homeless yeah. people all around us. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 you guys. I'm so grateful for all of your presence. Yeah, man. Ralph, I love you so much. My mom commented, what a wonderful man. Love you, Ralph. And I love how you talk about Anu. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. I know m- mom has seen us through all our, our, our amazing things that he's done for me. So I know she has a right to know what she's talking about. Thanks for the question, Sharon. And Ralph, is there any last advice or last words, or maybe just a, 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 a saying that you live your life by that you want my my mantra in life is yeah. success and happiness is your best revenge. Ooh, that's kind of what we said last week. You heard it, folks. Success and happiness is your best revenge, said by <laughs> Ralph Malani. I want to put that in my book that I'm writing on the love little it. corner. Sharon, <laughs> look. This is my, this I love is my it. Bed. You're yeah. using it. I haven't used it yet but i yeah. have it on my table i have your little sweet note that you wrote me oh, and, oh, yeah. nice. i love how on every single page there's a little you know message oh. so that will be my message on my book it'll be ralph's message one of the pages will say success and happiness is your best revenge <laughs> i love it you're getting ideas yes I your book's coming i love you guys um Obviously. can we all say bye to ralph and thank you uh, everybody for being here you. tonight Hi, Ralph. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for staying up late, everybody. I love you guys. Bye, Ralph. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.